Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Sony Cybershot DSC RX10 Mark II. Priced at $1,300 US, you're looking at one of the most expensive and best performing bridge cameras ever made. We've got a 24 to 200 millimeter Carl Zeiss f2.8 lens fixed to this one inch sensor, which has a DRAM stack design. UHD video capture at 100 megabits per second in XAVCS, 20.2 megapixel still capture, of course, raw capable as well, much like the RX10 before it. But the advantage ultimately of this new sensor or revision of the sensor is that it is now backlit, which means better overall performance, especially with regard to low light capability. In terms of design, Sony really didn't have to change much. We have a clickable aperture ring here so that you can actually feel the steps as you're shooting, or if you're shooting video, simply flip the camera over and use this switch right here to turn that on or off. Now it's off, so if you're shooting in video mode, it is completely silent. And that's the great thing about the RX10 Mark II, much like its predecessor, the original RX10. It's all about flexibility and accommodating the best of both worlds with regard to still and video capture in one body uh, with a fixed lens, a bridge style experience, something that really can't be achieved, in my opinion, even with something like the FC-1000. Now, the FC-1000 is a great camera from Panasonic, and I expect the successor will be even better, but it does not have the build quality. It doesn't have the F2.8 across the entire range, and it most certainly does not have uh, the S-Log video capability that this camera has, which I think is a bit of a game changer for those of you that are interested in a camera like this specifically for video purposes. And that is what it's all about. It is a hybrid after all, even though video is capped at 29, uh, 59, it still is one of those cameras that falls into a gray space uh, because it is the size of a digital SLR in many ways. I mean, it's not going to uh, outweigh something like the brand new uh, A7R Mark II. Uh, but it definitely gives you an entire, almost system inside one body, and that is the purpose, after all, of a bridge-style camera. Now, that one-inch sensor I mentioned, 20.2 megapixels, a solid performer Sony's been leaning on for a long time now, and for good reason. Uh, they've only improved upon it, and now with that DRAM stacked uh, design on the sensor, we also have some extra benefits I already mentioned UHD video capture. This camera also, for those of you that are curious, is capable of shooting 960 frames per second. Now, of course, that changes uh, in, with regard to quality that you're capturing, uh, and there are preferences that you can set. I may menu dive to show you some of that. Um, and I find that to be more of a gimmick, personally. But I know there are those of you out there that love that feature in both uh, the RX100 Mark IV, which I've been using, shooting with since launch, as well as here in this camera. And essentially, you're working with the exact same sensor uh, and stacked DRAM design in both this and the RX100. The key difference is the form factor and overall profile, and of course, the lens attached to that sensor. Uh, this is a more expensive camera, larger camera, expect more performance. The only thing I've noticed that is odd is that there is a bump in the zoom. Uh, for those of you worried about whether or not the zoom is actually audible with the onboard microphones that flank the hot shoe mount right here, it is. However, you can slow down the speed of the zoom, and that does pretty much eliminate the motor noise. Uh, so basically, everything that you knew about the RX10 is still... Uh, the case here with the RX10 Mark II, you can see the actual readout of where you are in the uh, 35 millimeter equivalency of this 24 to 200 mil piece of glass. Again, f2.8 across the range, that is significant if still imaging is your primary focus. Out of the box, this is the zoom speed you're going to get. And as I mentioned, you can slow it down. That will eliminate uh, that zoom noise. Completely electronic, uh, at least the shutter. Uh, which does mean that this thing is completely silent when you shoot. Something I love, something we had with the previous gen RX10, and Sony wasn't going to do away with that here in this generation. So if I fire off a shot, you can hear it makes a physical noise, but there is no actual shutter noise, uh, and that can be turned on or off. Uh, so really, this is a silent killer uh, if there ever was one, much like the A7R Mark II, the RX100 Mark IV, something that Sony has been very smart about integrating into all of their cameras. We've got a great OLED viewfinder. Autofocus also improved uh, 16 frames per second now, continuous shooting. 
uh, which just makes this camera inherently faster. That's part of that stack DRAM design. You can see we've got a readout of essentially all of your important information to know. Another thing you're not going to find on Panny's uh, FZ1000 Mega Zoom, which isn't something that every user needs. Of course, this camera doesn't have a fully articulating screen, uh, screen like the FZ1000 that comes all the way around. Uh, nor is there any touch screen found here, but I really have no desire for a touch screen in a camera like this. I mean, I think it serves its purpose. I know why so many people wish it were there, uh, but I personally don't really care. Wi-Fi and NFC are on board. Uh, also, if you're going to shoot 1080p, that's something people have been raving about and for good reason. Uh, when it comes to the stabilization on this camera, much like the RX10 before it, you're going to see some incredible results. So even if you don't plan on shooting in 4K, which I'm not going to say requires a tripod, but is definitely far more sensitive in my experience, but that has always been the case. Even if we go back to the beginning of HD capture, uh, then 1080p is just going to look incredible uh, in its highest bit rate on here uh, in XAVCS. You can see as I open these two doors, we get access uh, to our microphone and headphone jack, as well as our multi jack, which is essentially just a micro USB port for charging, as well as optional accessories uh, like a remote trigger. And of course, HDMI out, uh, which is a clean output, which is definitely something uh, that users of a camera like this, if they're video centric, are going to want to have. I don't really look at this as an A camera, but an amazing B camera, whether you're a videographer at a wedding, whatever it may be, or if you're actually shooting a documentary or a photojournalist, <clears throat> excuse me, I think this camera does have a very large market, not just with, you know, being a great family camera um, to capture the kids, or of course, just for a hobbyist who wants to grow with something that they know is going to last them several years and really accommodate everything they need without having to invest in or become part of an interchangeable lens system. Now, the one-inch sensor isn't going to yield results, uh, the same dynamic range as something like a full-frame sensor, but it is going to deliver very close results to something like an APS-C. And that's where, at least the RX line of cameras, in my opinion, they haven't killed the APS-C market, but for Sony in many ways, you may have noticed if you follow their uh, DI business like I do, that they have been making a lot more RX uh, models with one inch sensors than they have APS-C cameras lately. And there's a reason. There's a bigger market for the point and shoot arena with high quality results. People wanna pick up, shoot, get amazing results, and that's exactly what this camera does, much like the RX100 series. Uh, and that's what makes it so popular. And then if you do wanna get hands-on, if you do want uh, full manual control, whether it's using this aperture ring in the smooth or click mode where you can feel the steps physically without looking, uh, or if you want to just uh, actually customize the camera, you have that ability. You see you've got a C1 button here uh, on the back side of the camera, uh, essentially the exact same layout we get with Sony cameras across the board. Uh, menu button over here on the left side. The video button, uh, like most cyber shots, is actually center mounted rather than on the right side of the grip like we get with uh, alpha branded uh, Sony inter interchangeable lens uh, cameras. Battery life, by the way, on here has been solid. There's no question if you're going to shoot 4K video, it is going to drain that battery more quickly. And I have not hit any overheating problems. For those of you that are wondering, I'm sure eventually I could, but I have not, at least in my experience, had any issue with that thus far. Keep in mind, you're going to need a uh, SDXC card that can write at a very high speed if you want to capture UHD video. That means UHS-3. And I have covered cards like that in the past. Go ahead and search my channel. You'll see them. They're affordable. They're not expensive anymore. I mean, they're certainly not inexpensive compared to non-UHS has three cards, uh, but they are affordable at this point in a way they didn't used to be. Wi-Fi, NFC on board, you can see the NFC contact point right there, battery bay right down here. And I do like that they keep that separate. That's the exact same design they've got going on with the A7R Mark II, and that's exactly as things should be. Uh, I'm not a big fan of when the SD card is located where the battery is. I mean, after all, if you're on a tripod, that's kind of a nightmare. Um, even if it is accessible, it's still preferable to have it here on the side of the body. And I even prefer the uh, actual video capture button here. The OLED viewfinder is great. It does have a sensor like all of Sony's high-end cameras. Uh, even their cyber shots like the uh, HX90V 
uh, with its built-in OLED viewfinder now incorporate that original Konica Minolta sensor, which some people love, some people hate. I personally am a fan of having it. More is more when it comes to battery saving purposes. Uh, autofocus, pretty good on here. Definitely better uh, than the RX10, but there's no question that this update is all about uh, that 4K video, uh, high-speed recording, and also uh, just really overall completing a camera that I think everyone wished last year had those features, specifically the UHD video. You know, I personally um, don't really care, as I mentioned before, about the 960 frames per second, uh, but to have the capability to shoot UHD video and have incredible still quality and great range across that 24 to 200 mil bright piece of Zeiss glass. I mean, this is what makes Sony bridge cameras, Sony cyber shots in particular, so successful is that they do a great job pairing uh, a fantastic sensor with a fantastic piece of glass. Don't get me wrong, Panas uh, Panasonic's Leica glass on the FC1000 is also great, but the build quality of this camera is in another league. So not only do I think you get better results from this glass uh, with that constant F2.8 across the range, more capability, flexibility, but then you also have build quality that reminds you that you're working with something that feels like you actually are getting what you paid for. And even though that's not what you buy a camera for, it is reassuring. Um, I'm not knocking the FC1000, but compared to it, the FC1000 does feel a little bit more like a toy. It's all plastic. Even though it's bigger than this, it's actually, I think, lighter than this camera. So keep in mind, uh, exposure compensation dial right here, nothing really that you missed there. The flash right there, which is solid, but you know, if you're really serious about uh, getting uh, or using a flash, you're probably going to want to mount something on the hot shoe. Um, some people will be disappointed uh, that, you know, e e there's no XLR output on here. I'm pretty sure you can get an adapter just like you can uh, with the A7R Mark II. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but really, this camera does offer everything an amateur, a prosumer, a hobbyist, even a pro could possibly want in a single body. And again, the idea is to replace that system and only have one camera to carry around, um, which in a perfect world would be uh, quite simple. And as I mentioned, autofocus has been great. Video quality is great. Um, I do notice in the 4K video that if you're, you know, handheld, even with steady shot, uh, there is a little bit of, um, I won't say stabilization issues, but a little bit of stutter, but the image quality is still just exceptional. And you can see the zoom range right there. I'm trying to recreate that zoom wiggle that I was mentioning uh, when you go through the range where it hits a little bit of a bump. I'm not seeing it here now, which is a good thing because I'd like to think that um, it's just a defect in my model, but I have been asked about it by several of you, have seen it across forums. Um, it's not something I see every time I zoom, so it isn't completely uniform, but it is definitely present. You know, I'm, I'm always honest in my reviews, uh, so no exception here. I'll tell you right now that I have noticed that issue. But otherwise, this is an exceptional camera, unmatched right now on the market, nothing else like it. You simply won't get a sensor like this with the capability that the RX10 Mark II has. Again, the build quality, the Zeiss F2.8 glass with, I would say, very good range. Then if you throw clear image zoom on um, and crop on the sensor, you're only going to get even more range out of it. See right now, I have it set to RAW and JPEG, just to take you quickly through the menus here. Uh, you can see the video quality right there, which you can, of course, drop down to XAVCS, like I was mentioning, and get some of the best looking HD video uh, that you could possibly imagine. Um, and uh, down here, you can see the 120p, uh, 100 megabit mode. That is what is extraordinarily popular. Um, that is something that differentiates it in a big, big way. Uh, if I go ahead and go back, um, I also want to show you, this is uh, for the high speed recording, you can see right here, 960 frames uh, per second, 60p, 50 megabits. Um, you can basically drop that down to 30p or 24p. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility here, much more than you're going to see in something like the FC1000, again, outside of the mega zoom element. Uh, in terms of, and the articulating screen that can shoot a selfie. You can frame a selfie. So for those of you that that is a priority, I will point it out. Um, but everything else here just works exactly as it should. Built-in neutral density filter is a nice touch. Keep in mind that when shooting 4K, uh, steady shot is limited 
to standard. You cannot use the active or intelligent active. Now you can see they are selectable here in the traditional HD world, but that's because we're no longer shooting in UHD. In UHD, you will be stuck with standard. I'm hoping, imagining that in the third revision of this camera, that will change. Uh, but again, it just does everything you know very well. You've got the Play Memory application store where you can essentially um, dial into many different apps, both free and pay for play, that are going to just let you expand your capabilities. Time lapse, video grading. I mean, you do have S Log now, which is really, again, I would say a game changer for video users, like I said earlier in this video. Uh, but just a great camera I can't say enough good things about, and that's because Sony continues to be um, an innovator in the DI field, and that's why this is one of the few areas where they continue to earn money, unlike the balance of their business, and that's because they do continue to push the envelope. So really, I think the RX10 Mark II right now, in my opinion, um, completes the picture I think that many users like myself had hoped the original RX10 uh, would carry. I mean, to not have that 4K video was upsetting when something like the FC1000 uh, launched right around the same time, not that far after, and at a lower price, no less. Uh, here, they maintain the $1,300 price point. It does give padding for a price dro a drop, no question there. But uh, now, so much more competency uh, and building upon a platform that was already firmly established, a favorite among bridge, uh, bridge shooters, so really nothing to dislike. Now, if your budget doesn't afford uh, the $1,300 price tag or you don't care about UHD, uh, UHD video or uh, the 960 frames per second or the improved uh, autofocus or the improved actual continuous shooting or S-Log, then I would say absolutely take a look at the RX10 because that can be found at a discount that is, I wouldn't say incredibly substantial, but a worthwhile difference for shooters that really are only buying this for still and 1080p video capture. But again, even if you're after great 1080p, this does outperform the original RX10, even though many will argue the lens quality seems to have dropped off with that bump I was talking about and the lens speed difference. But so far, those are my impressions of the RX10 Mark II. I know I said I was going to make this a quick update. It did run longer than expected, but that's because this camera deserves longer than expected. I mean, there's really nothing else like it on the market, much like the RX100 Mark IV. And this is why Sony is doing so well in DI. When you have no competition, uh, it's easy to set the price, to set the bar. And Sony right now is doing that across every element of their DI business. The RX10 Mark II, no exception, but rather the actual uh, standard, in my opinion, right now, at least until Panasonic updates uh, the FZ1000. So great lens, great sensor, uh, great UHD video capability on a tripod, even better, uh, and flexibility for uh, beginners all the way up to professionals. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.